Good evening and welcome to our Wednesday night episode of Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Welcome to the beautiful Lime Bay. And it does look absolutely stunning today. I urge you to come and pay us a visit. Looking out across the bay, the sun is shining. It is cold, I will be the first to admit. But it's kind of a really crisp cold. It's that real wintry January cold. And I, I think it feels, as long as you're wrapped up warm, it feels brilliant. A huge thank you for joining me once again for our regular late night visit to those dusty studio archives of old time radio shows right here at my home on the south coast of the United Kingdom. Tonight we've got Rocky Jordan with an episode called Senor Chavez. Senor Senor Chavez? Ah well, it sort of sounds like that. And it's from 1945. I'm Brett, I'm your host for our nighttime podcast. Welcome to another episode. Don't forget, I've got a Facebook page, Instagram page, YouTube channel. It's all there. It's all called Brett's All Time Radio Show. It would be brilliant if you could follow me. Feel free to send any feedback to brett at tourdate.co.uk. Just launched a supporter page as well. I'll tell you all about that a little bit later on. But for now, it's time for our Wednesday night visit to Cairo with Rocky Jordan from 1945. In those places in this world where intrigue and danger go hand in hand, where death and disaster are the rewards of weakness. In such places will be found a man named Jordan. In a narrow street off Istanbul's Grand Bazaar, not far from the Mosque Valid Sultan, stands the Café Tambourine, run by a man named Jordan. The Café Tambourine, clouded with the smoke of Oriental tobaccos, crowded with humanity, alive with the babble of many languages. Rocky Jordan's faithful man Friday has just told Rocky, Duke, and Tony of a discovery made by his nephew, who is in the employ of a Spaniard named Chavez. At the home of Chavez, many strange things have been happening. Many trunks, boxes, and crates have arrived. Many strange men and women with Spanish, Swedish, and Swiss names, but with the accents of Central Europe, pass through the home of Chavez. Ali's nephew reports that the boxes which arrive, labeled merchandise, contain money, gold, precious stones, art objects, things of great value, which are hidden in the basement. Rocky, intrigued by the possibilities of profit in this information, shows interest in further investigation. His theory is that Mr. Chavez has established a station for escaping Nazi war criminals. When the others leave, Rocky drifts down into the cafe... And when he sees an old acquaintance, an international crook rejoicing in the name of Triflis, he walks over to his table and says, Hello, Triflis. How's tricks? Ah, Rocky, my friend. Sit down. Sit down. Yeah, thanks. I haven't seen you for some time. Where you been? Oh, I have been away. I... Making arrangements to enter a new business, Rocky. I... I'm now engaged in that business. No kidding? Mm -hmm. Anything legal enough to talk about? Oh, Rocky. (laughs) I'm afraid not. Uh But a fine occupation. Very remunerative and uh, no risk. Uh, Sounds good. Making any money? Rocky, you wouldn't believe it. Such money I have never seen. I I think perhaps you would be interested. Uh, Sounds very possible. What's the deal? It is not... Within the law, Rocky. Uh Uh-huh. Go on. It is an operation which helps many people. uh, People who are in danger. Sounds better all the time. How about a breakdown on it? I cannot talk here, Rocky. Uh, uh, Tomorrow, perhaps, in your office. uh, I uh, need a partner, Rocky. Okay. Tomorrow at noon. Be there. I I shall be there, Rocky. It's a deal. And so long, Triflis. Deal tomorrow, then. What's that big smile on your kisser for, Rocky? 
I just had a talk with Triflis. He wants me for a partner. Huh? Triflis teaming up with you? Yeah. We're going to talk it over tomorrow noon in my office. And if he's mixed up in the deal I think he is, he's going to be mighty useful, Duke. He's my pigeon. Anything you can tell me about? I guess I can tell you what I think. Oh, brother, I'm weary. Let's sit down over here and have a beer before we turn in, shall we? Sounds good to me. Oh, Akim, draw two, will you? Yes, you Fendi. Boss, you look tired enough to call it a day. Why don't you turn in? I'm going to in just a few minutes. just want to relax a little bit before I hit the pad. You know, Duke, I... <sighs> I think our little chum, Triflis, is going to be a great help to us. Yeah. Well, it's about time Triflis was helping somebody. There's one guy that makes me sorry I didn't stay home and practice my piano lessons instead of learning to fight. Oh, Triflis is a necessary evil, Duke. If it wasn't for people like him figuring out strange ways of making a dishonest dollar, we wouldn't have much fun. Yeah. Maybe you're right, Rocky. Sure, I love guys like Triflis. They think they're so clever that it's like... Shooting fish to outsmart him. What's the angle, boss? What's Triflis cooking up now? Well, I tell you, Duke, since Turkey has declared war on Germany, there's a lot of embarrassment in certain circles. Know what I mean? Yeah. This ain't a neutral country no more. And they're going to round up all the crowds, huh? Yeah, and the Japs. Now, the Japs are just plain out of luck because a Jap's a Jap. But the Heinies are in a little better shape. If they can get their hands on a phony passport. Ah, that what Triflis is up to? Sounds like it to me. Yeah, it all adds up, Duke. The dope we've got in this house where Ollie's nephew works. The whole thing. Nobody expected Turkey to declare war. The Germans who can get out of Germany. The rankers in the Nazi party. They've been shipping their money and their valuables into Turkey for months. Waiting for the day when they have to change their names and their nationalities to beat the war guilt trials. And the confiscation of the piles of dough they've stolen from the little people in Germany. Great little group, Duke. Fine little gang. Yeah. We're going to take a shot at getting them, huh, Rocky? Can you think of any more pleasant work? No. Sounds like a job that could be enjoyed. You know, Duke, these guys we're fighting here in Istanbul... They're the real heels in this war. They're the guys that stood on balconies and shouted their lungs out, selling a lot of dummies on the fact that they were members of a master race. They're the guys that gave the orders to wipe out the population of towns like El Lidice in Czechoslovakia. The guys that robbed the churches and looted the towns in every country the Huns occupied. Yeah, and now they're going to try to get away with it. Yeah. Now, while Hitler chews the carpet and orders the soldiers and the square-headed civilians to die defending their homes and their fields, these big shots are taking a powder. They know they're whipped. They know they're slated for a blank wall and a firing squad. Well, some of them will get away with it, but uh, we'll take care of a few, huh? <laughs> The next morning, Rocky Jordan awakens with a feeling that something unusual is going to happen to him this day. A premonition of something unfinished. As his mind clears, he remembers that Triflis will be at his office at noon. Triflis, the nondescript hanger-on who has suddenly blossomed into a man of wealth. As he is struggling with his shirt, trying to get his broken arm through the sleeve, the door to his quarters opens, and Ollie, his faithful servant, says... What is the matter, Rocky? I, I heard such language. Uh, I was just trying to get this uh, thing... Let me help you, Rocky. You are so impatient. A uh, great big boy like me having to be dressed. Rocky, you cannot get that arm to your sleeve with the bandages on it. it, it it's too big. Uh, we'll slip the sleeve then. Uh, yes, Rocky, I will. Yeah, that does it. Uh, Rocky, my nephew, uh, the, the one I told you about... The one who's working as a houseboy for Senior Chavez? Yeah. Uh, he'll be here in an hour. Uh, you you said you wanted to talk with him. Yeah, that's right, I do. Uh, he is most anxious to talk with you. Uh, I hope it is not too early, Rocky. Yeah, look, hand me that brown knitted tie there, will you? Uh, yes, Rocky. Uh, shall, shall I, I tie it for you? 
Yeah. My gosh, I didn't know how much I used that left arm of mine. Hadn't any idea what a handy thing it was. Your nephew uh, run across any more dope that sounds interesting? Uh, I think so. Uh, get your chin up, Rocky. Uh, I cannot see what I'm doing. Oh, sorry, old man. My my nephew reports that two more visitors have arrived at the home of Senor Chavez. They, they arrived at dawn. Uh-huh. Ah, come on, come on. That tie must be all right. Uh, they, Let's get out of here and have a talk with your smart relation. Uh, here, here's your coat. Uh, oh, Rocky. What? Uh, where's the sling? Uh, you you must have that arm in a sling. <laughs> All right, Doctor. It's over there on the dresser. Hmm? Oh, oh, yes, here it is. Thanks. I don't know what I'd do without you, Ali. You've been more than a mother to me. <laughs> You're making fun of me, Rocky. I don't know whether I am or not. Hey, Rocky. Oh, for the love of Mike. Come on in, Duke. Uh, I sure get a lot of privacy around this joint. What's the matter? Am I getting fat or something? You guys figure I'm getting too much sleep? I just came up to see if you were awake, Rocky. What's he doing here? Uh, uh, Duke, uh, I came to tell Rocky that my nephew would be here soon. Uh, This joint is paved with good intentions. Oh, well. What's the occasion, Duke? Well, I've been out around already this morning. I thought maybe you'd need some help getting into your duds with that uh, broken arm. Yeah. <laughs> Ollie got me dressed all right. Where you been, Duke? Over to the British Embassy. Talking to Major Pettigrew. Oh, yeah? What did he have to say? Well, I just sort of asked him what was going on now that there's a war on. Uh, well, the people of Turkey are, are glad that we have finally declared war on the Axis. We have a fine army. One of the finest in the world. I don't think that Turkey's planning on taking any very active part in the war. What did Pettigrew think, Duke? He thinks the same as you. Hey, Ollie. Mm-hmm. How about running downstairs and having the kitchen send up a little breakfast, then? Huh? Yes. Uh... You had breakfast, Duke? Yeah, I had one early, but I'm ready for another one. Uh, I had mine. Uh, shall I have two breakfasts sent up, Rocky? Yeah, that's right. Bacon and eggs, over easy. And whatever else they have. But quick. R- right away, Rocky. As soon as I get that done, I shall go get my nephew and bring him here. Okay, Ollie. See you later. The reason I came back, boss, Pettigrew wants to see you. He does? What about? Something's cooking. Something that he thinks you can handle better than his outfit. Well, did he give you any, uh, any hints as to just what? Well, I tell you, Rocky... While I was talking to him, I just casually mentioned the fact that you were pretty sure that there were a lot of crowds here in Istanbul, passing as neutrals. Yeah? Maybe you talked too much. I didn't tell him anything. I was just seeing if I could get him to talk enough to do us some good. Yeah, what'd he say? Well, he thinks you're right. In fact, he knows you're right. And he wants to work with you. Oh, that's just fine. What do I want to work with him for? What do we need him for? Well, don't jump down my throat. I didn't crack anything to him. All I know is that he's got some dope on a few people that he's suspicious of. And he's willing to let you use the information. Go talk to him yourself. Okay, I will. And look, Duke. I'll do the thinking for this outfit. Don't be getting nine feet five when you're five feet nine. I'll make the contacts and the decisions. Okay, okay, so I got out of line. I'll get back in. That's good. Unless Major Pettigrew or any other authority of any country knows about what we're doing the next few weeks, the better off we're going to be. Okay. Nobody's hurt. Come in. Rocky, when I went downstairs, my nephew was there waiting for me. Yeah? Uh, Senior Chavez had sent him to town on an errand, and he came by here. Uh, Can you see him now? Yeah, I suppose so. He he is very excited, Rocky. He says that he has news of the utmost importance for you. These are exciting days in Istanbul and at the Café Tambourine. With Turkey in the war against the Axis nations, many things are happening. 
and Rocky Jordan is going to be interested in an exciting new venture. Don't miss tomorrow's dramatic episode of A Man Named Jordan. A Man Named Jordan is written and directed by Ray Buffum and is presented every day, Monday through Friday, at this same time. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed our latest episode of Rocky Jordan. He's going to be back with another adventure this time next week. Don't forget, we'll be back tomorrow for an episode of Tales of the Texas Ranger, going live at 5 p.m. GMT, so make sure you're there. You can email me, brett, at touradate.co.uk. I'd love to know your thoughts on the show. As I mentioned earlier, I've got a Patreon page now where you can support if you'd like. You'll find a whole bunch of extra content there, and I'm going to be growing and growing that. Hopefully, it'll be a real go-to resource for some of our shows. Check out patreon.com forward slash Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week. And I'll see you next time on Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Love you. Bye. <laughs>